This is another day in Paris, the city I keep enjoying more and more, day after day. Amazing. I'm so glad I live here now. So, it's February 25th, and it's been half a year since I moved from Paris to Jerusalem, my hometown. And half a year might not seem like much, but it certainly feels like enough time for me to be able to reflect on these four years of my life in Paris objectively and kind of from a distance, I would say, which is what I want to do today. So my memories of Paris are honestly a mess that is hard to navigate in and planning for this video I found it hard to focus on any particular topic or argument, so I just kind of started to watch countless raw footage that I filmed in Paris and never actually used. Unfortunately, this year we had a very rainy winter. And the sun has risen six meters and flooded the whole no. And the question that came into my mind immediately while watching all of this stuff is did I make use of my time there in the best way? Or in other words, was I able to experience it as more than a tourist, which was certainly my idea from the start. Well, on the simplest level, what I came to is that while a tourist visits the city for sightseeing and leaves, I had to live my normal life there, which certainly changes your perspective quite dramatically. But at the same time, I know some people who lived there uh, just like myself for a few years and traveled all over Europe but never made the effort to explore the city itself. I can proudly say I was different though because while for them they may be moved every two years or something crazy like that and that was their lifestyle, I lived a completely normal life in Jerusalem for 10 years before it, not expecting to move anywhere and certainly not learn English and speak fluently in four years. So for me, it was certainly like an opportunity from the very start. And when we came there, it was just a marathon. You know, we crammed all kinds of activities and day trips into all of our free time and it felt like if we didn't then we weren't using it in the best way which was an expression that I used very often we are doing some shopping in Decathlon So I didn't find any smart way of doing this, so I just bite right into it, like a hot dog. Oh, yeah, not a hot dog. However, I think that kind of fascination can't be maintained for a long time, and eventually it had to fade out, which I think it sort of did. 
and I never saw Pierce in the same way as I did in the first year, which is, I think, why that first year is very special to me. On top of that, as I visited more cities, such as New York, Tokyo, and London, my perspective started to shift even quicker. Those seem to be the cities of the 21st century to me, the cool and trendy cities where everything was happening. And looking back, I actually, you know, solely remember what a vibrant city Paris actually was, with all the social events and festivals that we witnessed there. Uh, but at that moment, none of these things really changed that perspective. And I think what also stimulated that was that I was in an American school and New York was almost my mecca, which is why it was so special for me to visit New York. And so Paris stopped being as impressive to me. And in addition, I started seeing how elitist Parisian communities can be. I even wanted to make a video about it called Why Parisians are assholes or something like that. And you have to consider that my dad is a painter. And before we moved to Paris, we got to be quite familiar with the artist community in Jerusalem. We went to lots of exhibitions, met a lot of really interesting artists. And to me as a kid, it really seemed like that community was very open and welcoming, which I certainly didn't see in Paris. So there was there was that disappointment and you know we lived in a neighborhood full of galleries and yet it all seemed quite distant and soon I realized that many galleries antique stores and even these really fancy shops had all they needed in their tiny circle I realized that many galleries had a few artists they trusted and a few regular clients and they didn't need any strangers coming in to their gallery to just look around. Now I can't say I actually got to know that world very well and I myself know a few exceptions but I certainly had that perspective at the time and I was almost kind of frustrated at that and it's something ironic because you know this group of posh people from the 7th and 6th arrondissement represented Parisians to me while they weren't actually the majority of Parisians that I met. I met lots of really great people uh, in my judo and breakdance classes and next to the monkey bars uh, along the Seine River. For long periods of time I came there like five times a week and had great conversations with people from all kinds of backgrounds and age groups. Judging from the above and if you watched my videos, you can probably tell that I did get to interact with locals quite a lot, which I owe to my very rudimentary French skills, I guess. And that is something that I certainly wouldn't have acquired as a tourist. And while my French was very sloppy, I think it really catapulted me to another level in terms of being able to interact and initiate conversations with locals while traveling and uh, and even exploring Paris itself. You know, on top of that, I think I wouldn't have had most of the conversations I had while traveling in France, if not the vlogs. Because in a way, making videos was an excuse for me to try and initiate conversations when we traveled. And while some locals didn't have the patience for an actual interview, it was still a pretty solid reason 
for them to spend some time talking to me, a kid. Uh, and through video uh, and filmmaking, I actually got to have some of the craziest interactions uh, in my life. And on top of that, the longing to, to document my experience in Paris and while traveling really made me pay attention to details a lot more because when you want to accurately portray your experience and all these places you kind of have to fixate on these details a lot more and notice uh, what's good for a close-up what's good for a wide shot you get a much more varied view so i think these two things really helped me actually experience France in a deeper way. Uh, and I think an example of all of this is when I decided to make a video about the uh, craftsmanship in different shops and ateliers in my neighborhood. And this is the very world that felt distant to me in the start when I came and at that point I decided you know what I'll just knock on their doors and ask if I can get an interview which I certainly wouldn't do just like that it would be almost strange to do and of course there were people who closed the door on me immediately but on the other hand seeing other people agree to take their time uh, to show me around and give a full interview to me was really exhilarating and was the first step in getting to be more familiar with Paris. On that note, I want to clarify that these four years of my life have been incredible from beginning to end. And for me, living in such a place, I had these moments of enlightenment when I felt this gratitude really uh, just for being there and furthermore I think what is even more special is that I was still capable of having these moments of feeling that three four years later you know when I run up the Montmartre see the view unfold before me and just like, whoa, I live in, in this beautiful city. And I think the fact that I didn't lose the ability to still feel that gratitude is a pretty great sign. Um, most importantly, one thing that a tourist can't do is become a part of the city's life. Um, and observe it as deeply as I was able to, you know, at least not nearly as much as a resident. And what I mean by that is, in that period of time, I saw Paris in all of its highs and lows. And in some ways, it always affected me. I saw Paris during the floods and the snow. I was uh, there amongst thousands of crying Parisians when the Notre Dame was burning, uh, I saw the yellow vest protests, which often took place just a few blocks away from my house, and you know many other events that really shaped the city's general state. And even if some of these didn't have as much of an effect on me as an actual French citizen, I still got a much fuller picture than a tourist, and I still felt some of the repercussions on, on the city, on the atmosphere in the city. And that's a pretty big thing. Place de République is the center of Paris's events and protests. And right now, there are like five things going on at the same time. So these are my thoughts on Paris. Obviously, it's strange when people from Israel ask me about that time because it's not like some vacation, you know, it's four years of my life and a lot of things happen in four years. 
Uh, so I, I never truly know when to start when people just ask me, you know, tell me about Paris. Not like that actually happened a lot. <laughs> so did I make use of my time there in the best way? Well, I don't really know what the best way is. I can say that I immersed myself into the culture as much as I could, I think, most of the time, considering that I didn't go to a French school. So I think I can kind of say so. Uh, but the best way will certainly be different for various people. Uh, and actually it does kind of feel like a long past vacation at this point and I'm not sure how objective I can really be about this but I don't even think about Paris that much these days which is why I wanted to record all of this before I simply forget it you know also the quarantine has acted like this buffer zone between these two periods of my life in that I feel like my time there didn't properly end while my life here hasn't really begun which I hope it will pretty soon and I'll be able to bring more videos Quarantine is over. There's a crappy street musician playing there. Quite a lot of people on the street. And honestly, it feels like we returned just now to the Jerusalem that I know. <laughs> Though that might sound kind of corny. Holy crap. <laughs> 